the dog gets more brain to learn with and will be able to concentrate. Then you can start teaching him things. But he needs a brain first. And then, of course, you can do different kind of training, like walking together, same direction. That's one training you can do. These go quite close to each other. If you need more space, use space, more space. And, of course, the curving is another tool. Then watching things from a distance. Not really speedy things, not, not kids or dogs playing, that's too stressful. But let's say people walking past, uh, cars driving past, dogs walking there. Watch from a distance, give them a lot of information. We use many simple, efficient methods like this, and they work because we give the dog time to think and learn. And that's essential. So, the consequences of stress are enormous, both mentally, physically, and behavior wise. You have to take it seriously. Keep the dog stress level moderate and low with, okay, once in a while having excitement, getting really stressed, that's okay. But just let the dog have a chance to get down afterwards. Once in a while is okay might even be good for us to get a little high once in a while. That's okay. But you should know the effects. Let's say you do something stressful with your dog one day. Okay, the dog might have diarrhea. He might pee a lot. He might be a little uh, more barking at the things. Uh, but you should just know that, okay, hmm, that's the result of yesterday. So let's just have a couple of easy days now. Don't get hysterical about it. There's nothing to worry about. But you should know the effects will be there and you cannot help it. There's nothing you can do about the effects. If you have the necessary understanding and knowledge about this, you will have a much easier life also and less worries. Okay, 